Hello, today we're going to talk about exponential functions. So what is an exponential function? So this is where a function has a variable that is located in the exponent and the base of the function is a positive real number that is not equal to one. So let's look at some examples. This says f of x equals three raised to the power of x. We have f of x equals five times two raised to the power of x. Here we have f of x equals four raised to the power of x minus two. So these are all examples of some exponential functions. Now look over here at some non-examples. Notice this one is f of x equals x to the third power. We have a number in our exponent. Therefore, this is not considered an exponential function. Here we're just multiplying. And in this one, this one can be confused sometimes, but notice this is a negative three. And in order for it to be an exponential function, it has to be a positive real number, not equal to one. So since this is a negative three, this will be not be considered an exponential function. So let's take a look at what some of the different parts of these exponential functions represent. So notice here I've got y equals a times d to the power of x. So what do these represent? Okay, now b we call our base. Okay, and that's because we're going to be raising it to a power. Okay, so b is our base. And then we've got our x. That is our input, right? We're going to input some value for x, and we're going to get an output. That output is going to be our y value out here. Okay, we're going to do our math. Now, the a here is a little bit different. The a is going to be our initial value. So if we start off with any amount already there, that's what we call our initial value. Graphically speaking, this is also our y-intercept. And if you think about it, our y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So if we had 0 here, 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this would be like a times 1, which would just give us a. And that's why this a term here is considered our y-intercept, because when we get x equals 0, we're just left with a here on the right-hand side of our function. So let's take a look at equivalent exponential functions. So they're going to want us to come up with another way to write this function. So let's see what we can do here. Notice that we have this function raised to the power of 2 to the power of x. So we can raise it to the power of 2. That's easy, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this base and raise it to the numerical power. Now please excuse my handwriting on here. So we're going to have f of x equals 3. Now we know that this exponent is only applying to what's inside the parentheses. And so we have 4 to the power of 2. Okay, so we're going to do 4 to the power of 2. And we're going to leave the x out here. And we know that 4 to the power of 2 is 16 because 4 times 4 is 16. And so we can rewrite this as f of x equals 3 times 16 to the power of x. All right, let's try another one. So we have f of x equals, and the 2 on the outside stays. We're going to take this 3, and we're going to raise the 6 to the power of 3. And we're going to keep the x on the outside. And so this will give us f of x equals 2, and we have to do 6 to the power of 3, okay, so 6 raised to the power of 3, and that gives us 216 to the power of x. Now, just a note here, we cannot multiply 2 times 216 because in order of operations, exponents comes before multiplication, and this is still being raised to a power. So please be careful and do not multiply these two together, okay? Okay, last one. So we have f of x equals 5, and we're going to do 3 to the power of 4 raised to the power of x. So we're going to have f of x equals 5. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. So 5 times 81 to the power of x. Okay, so now that we have a better understanding of how we can kind of manipulate these functions and simplify things, 
Now we're going to work on solving for a variable when it's located in the exponent. Okay, and we're going to kind of keep that same thing in mind when we're talking about raising numbers to a power. So notice here they're wanting us to solve for x, and we've got the base of 2. Well, this one just says 8. So I need to think of a way that I could rewrite 8 to have a same base as 2. So if we remember, 8 means 2 times 2 times 2, right? 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Or we could say that this means 2 to the power of 3. So I can rewrite 8 as 2 to the power of 3. So that would mean, if they have the same bases, that we can just set our exponents equal to each other. So in this case, I can say, well, that means that x is equal to 3. Let's see if we can take it up a step. All right, so this one's a little bit more difficult. Again, we have two different values for a base, right? We have 25 and we have 5. But we all know that 25 is the same thing as 5 times 5, or 5 squared, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as 5 squared equals 5 to the power of x minus 2. Since our bases are the same, I can simply take those two bases, uh, or take those two exponents and equal them to each other. So I'm now going to have 2 equals x minus 2. Now I have a normal equation, I'm just going to solve for x. So to get x by itself, I'm going to add 2 to both sides of our equation. And I'm going to get that x equals 4. Now if I go back and I think about that for a minute and I plug it back in up here, if I go, well, 4 minus 2 is 2, and 5 squared is 25. That's the correct answer. Okay, this one looks a little bit more challenging because we have big numbers, right? But don't let that confuse you, okay? So we got to go back and we got to think, oh, what numbers are 81 and 27? What numbers they potentially have in common here that maybe we could write them as, as bases of, of each other? Okay, so we want to go back and we want to break these numbers down. Okay, so much more challenging here, but let's break these down. And so we want to break them down into prime form, right? Prime factorization. So if I go back and I break these down, I'm going to go, okay, 81. Well, 81 is a perfect square. That's like 9 times 9. And 9 times 9, that's like 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 81 is really the same thing as 3 to the power of 4. So let's come over here with 27 and see what happens. Well, 27 is the same thing as 3 times 9. And 9 is 3 times 3. So that would mean that 27 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 3. I now have same bases, so I can rewrite this. But we have to be careful. This says 3 to the power of 4 times x, because I have to multiply this exponent with the exponent that's already there. I have to do the same thing here on this other side. I'm going to have 3, and I'm going to raise it to the power of my 3 over here, but I have to multiply everything that's already in that exponent by 3. Now that my bases are the same, I can now rewrite this as an equation and I can actually solve them, okay? So I'm going to have 4x equals 3 times x plus 3. Now, order of operations tells me I should apply the distributive property here to get rid of these parentheses. So I'm going to take this 3 and multiply it by the x, and I'm going to take the 3 and multiply it by the 3. Now, I want to get all the x's to the same side. I'm going to move this 3x to the other side so that they're all together. So since it's a positive 3x, I'll subtract 3x from both sides. And this now leaves me with x equals 9. And there's my answer. I could plug it back in and do the math in my calculator to check to make sure that I have the correct solution, which is always an excellent idea. Now, the last thing that we're going to look at in this video today is how to determine 
from a table whether we're dealing with an exponential function. So how do we figure that out? So what we want to do is we want to look for a pattern, meaning is it being multiplied by the same amount to get from step to step? So do I, what do I multiply to get from 25 to 125? Well, that's 5. And then what is 125 multiplied by to get to 625? Well, that's 5 as well. This number here is hopefully going to be your base. So to check to see if it's exponential, we're going to say, okay, so this would be 5 to the power of x. If this is correct, then that would mean when I plug in 2 for x, I should get 25. So let's give it a shot. f of x equals 5 to the power of 2, which is 25. It works. And it should do the same thing for 3. Okay, f of x equals 5 to the third power, which is 125. Therefore, this is an exponential function, and that exponential function is 5 to the power of x. Let's look at another example. So again, we're going to look to see if the pattern is multiplying or dividing here. And we know that 8 times 2 is 16. We know that 16 times 2 is 32. So we are now thinking that f of x equals 2 to the power of x. So to check to see if that's correct, I'm going to take my x values over here, and I'm going to plug them in. So I'm going to take 3 and say 2 to the power of 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. It works. 2 to the power of 4. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. This works. Here is our function, f of x equals 2 to the power of x. Now, sometimes we got to figure out a more complicated solution here. So we come in and we look at this problem and we say, okay, I'm multiplying by 2, right? So times 2, times 2. We say, okay, f of x equals 2 to the power of x. But when I come down here and I plug in 3, I'm not getting 24. So that means this is not the correct solution. But does that necessarily mean it's not exponential? Well, I'm not really sure, right? So let's see if we can do some more math here to figure this out. So we know, if we go back to our original problem where we broke apart the different variables and what they represented, that sometimes we could have another number in our function, right? We could have another number, an a value, that's being multiplied by that b to the x power. But that number is also our y-intercept. Now, y-intercept is when x equals 0. So we're going to work backwards and fill in our table to see if we can get a number here and that would be that a value that we are looking for. So remember, we had y equals a times b to the x. If we can figure out what this number is, we can see if maybe we can write this function. So we know that when we are going this way, we are multiplying by 2. So if we reverse it and go the other way, it means we must be dividing by 2. So if I take 24 and I divide it by 2, I'm going to get 12. And 12 divided by 2 is going to give me 6. And 6 divided by 2 is going to give me 3. So now our table looks like this. Let's see if we can fill in for our missing values here and test it to make sure that it works. So y equals, which we also know we could write as f of x, right? So y equals, we're saying that a is equal to 3. We know that our pattern was that we we're multiplying by 2 each and every time. Times 2, times 2, times 2. That was our b value raised to the power of x. 
So this is how we would write our function. Now we need to test it and let's make sure that it works. So let's try two. So I have y equals three times two to the power of two. Y equals three times four, and then Y equals 12. Now again, remember Y and F of X are interchangeable, okay? 12 and two matches here. We could do one more just to make sure. This time I'll write it as F of X. So F of X equals three times two to the power of three. That means f of x equals 3 times 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 3 times 8 is 24. So we've now figured out our exponential function that's a little more complicated, right? Because we have another number involved here. We had to find our a value. And that's okay, because we could just work backwards until we figured out what our value was when x was equal to 0. And we now have our exponential function. I hope you found this video helpful. If you still need additional assistance, please reach out to your instructor. Thank you.